A glass of fresh water from your tap is clear, clean enough to drink. But water in the Long Island Sound is cloudy and full of floating particles. Sometimes that makes people think that Long Island Sound is not fit for life. But in fact, the opposite is really true. The water in Long Island Sound is cloudy because it is so full of life. And many of those tiny particles floating around are actually very small living things. Like other coastal bodies of water in the U.S. and the world, there is a higher concentration of marine life here than in other marine environments. In this program, we'll learn how the changing seasons of the year affect the marine life in Long Island Sound. If we examine some Long Island Sound water closer, with the aid of a microscope, we can see plants and animals that are invisible to the naked eye. These organisms are called plankton, which means wanderer or free drifting. These microscopic plankton form the beginning of the food web. It's called a food web because if a connection were drawn between the animals and what they eat, it would look like a web or net. And the survival of each plant or animal in the web depends on the success of the others surrounding it. Tiny one-celled plants, called phytoplankton, use the energy from the sun and nutrients from the water to grow and reproduce. These plants are eaten by clams, oysters, and mussels, shellfish, and microscopic animals called zooplankton. The zooplankton are, in turn, eaten by larval fish. A larval fish is fish in its early stages of life. Small forage fish, such as silversides, sand lance, killifish, and anchovies, feast on zooplankton, as do some larger fish, such as menhaden and mackerel. On up the food web to wading birds, such as egrets and great blue herons, which may, in turn, eat the small fish. Shellfish are a favored food for herring gulls and blackback gulls. Also at the top of the food web are human beings who eat shellfish, such as clams, finfish such as mackerel, flounder, and bluefish. For most organisms in Long Island Sound, there is plenty of food for them to thrive and reproduce. Whenever something dies in the sound, it is decomposed by microorganisms such as bacteria, which return nutrients containing nitrogen and phosphorus to the water. These nutrients are the basic form of sustenance for the entire food web. But the largest sources of nutrients to the sound are the land and the air. Nutrients are absorbed through the cell wall of the smallest form of plant life in the sound, phytoplankton. In this way, food web is subjugal, and these after and year after year, life continues. Coastal bodies of water experience seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, just like we do on land. It is the complex interaction of seasonal factors such as sunlight, temperature, nutrients, and rainfall which dictates the seasonal changes for marine life in the sound. Let's begin the seasons of Long Island Sound in springtime. Spring comes early to Long Island Sound, around February. At this time, the days are getting longer and the sun begins to warm the surface waters. The coming of spring also brings spring rain showers and snowmelt runoff from the land. Along with the water, nutrients wash from the land into the sound. The increased daylight, warmer temperature, and the nutrients from both the land and the air act as a trigger for marine life in the sound. Suddenly, the waters of Long Island Sound begin to come alive after the long, cold winter. 
phytoplankton, the one-celled marine plants, begin to grow and reproduce. Similar to plants on land, these plants undergo the process of photosynthesis. Using the energy of the sun, phytoplankton convert carbon dioxide and water to oxygen and glucose, a form of sugar. Phytoplankton use the energy stored by glucose molecules to build larger molecules such as proteins and fats. This process requires nutrients. Besides the oxygen produced by the phytoplankton, oxygen also comes into the surface water from the atmosphere. And oxygen is needed by marine animals to survive. In early spring, the increased day length and the high level of nutrients prompts a population explosion for phytoplankton. It's called the spring bloom. While depleting the nutrients, phytoplankton grows in such numbers that this dense bloom can actually turn the waters of the sound green or brown. Diatoms are the predominant phytoplankton species in the early spring bloom because they are better adapted to colder waters than other species of phytoplankton. Diatoms are no larger than a dust particle. During a typical spring bloom, there may be five million diatom cells in a cup of water. The phytoplankton are not safe though, not as long as there are zooplankton in the water. Whereas phytoplankton are very small plants, zooplankton are very small animals. And certain species of zooplankton eat only phytoplankton. While some zooplankton remain roughly the same small size throughout their lives, other zooplankton are larval, or the very youngest, smallest stages of life, of numerous animals in the sound, such as crabs and barnacles. Zooplankton also includes small crustaceans, barely visible to the naked eye, known as copepods. Copepods are the most abundant kind of zooplankton in Long Island Sound and other coastal waters of the world. Copepods in the sound are about a millimeter in length, smaller than the point of a pencil, and they never get any bigger. Copepods and other crustaceans, such as lobsters and crabs, have a hard external skeleton. This exoskeleton is similar in texture to a fingernail. Copepods, whose name means oar foot, use their appendages to sweep food into their mouths. Copepods eat the diatoms and use the energy from this food to grow and lay eggs. It is now late spring, toward the end of April. An explosion of growth, undetected by the human eye, except perhaps for some cloudiness in the water, has been ongoing for some two months now. The Onrust, the research vessel of the Marine Sciences Research Center at the University at Stony Brook, is heading out into Long Island Sound with a group of students. They're going to investigate what has been going on in the water this spring. This is called a plankton net. It is a fine mesh net which is dragged through the water. Gallons and gallons of water filter through it leaving many of the little creatures trapped in the container at the end of the net. The contents of the net examined under a microscope reveals an astonishing variety of microscopic organisms. And one of the most abundant forms of microscopic life at this time of year are barnacles. Those crusty little creatures that latch themselves onto rocks, pilings, and the bottom of boats look quite different in their first three months of life. During this stage, they are free-swimming, microscopic creatures that feed on phytoplankton. After this initial stage, the young barnacle settles down and finds a home of its own. It secures itself to a hard surface in the water using a strong cement 
which it produces itself and forms a six-sided shell. Phytoplankton, diatoms. Zooplankton, copepods. Strange names for the very tiny creatures which burst into life in spring in Long Island Sound. But their importance is immeasurable, as they are the early links in the coastal marine food web. This food web supports a recreational and commercial fishery worth hundreds of millions of dollars to the local economy. One of the first fish of the season for the recreational fishers is the winter flounder. Winter flounder is a flat fish with both eyes on the same side of its head. It spawns when the bottom temperature of the water is near freezing. By late spring, the wading birds, the egrets and the herons fly in from the south to feed in the protected marshes and back bays on small fish, worms and shellfish. It is now May. The temperature is getting warmer. The sun heats the surface waters of the sound. The spring rains and storms have stopped. The wind has calmed down as well. Summer has arrived on Long Island Sound. To us, of course, summer means the end of school, trips to the beach, boating, swimming, or fishing. But the arrival of summer has an entirely different meaning for what is perhaps the most ancient of all species in the sound. It is early June, at a time when the tides are likely to be the highest of the year. Evening comes to Long Island Sound. It is a full moon, an irresistible cue for the mating season of one of the most ancient and successful of all living creatures in the sound, the horseshoe crab. The horseshoe crab is a primitive creature, little changed from its ancestral form, which has been inhabiting coastal seas of the Atlantic Ocean since the age of the dinosaurs. It is, in fact, not really a crab at all, but a relative of the spider and the scorpion. Despite its appearance, it is not dangerous. The long, sword-like tail is not a weapon, but is used mainly for balance and to right itself if it has turned on its back. If you turn a live horseshoe crab over, you can see its five pairs of legs and leaf-like gills. These gills are used not only to breathe, but to help them swim as well. During mating season, the crabs come ashore in pairs or in long trains, one upon another. The larger female is on the bottom, and the smaller male clings to her shell. Near the high tide mark on the beach, the female digs a shallow nest in the sand and lays her eggs while the male fertilizes them. Four weeks later, the newborn horseshoe crabs are swept into the water and grow slowly, molting or shedding their shell many times as they grow. It will take some 9 to 12 years for a horseshoe crab to mature to adulthood. Summer progresses on Long Island Sound. It is now mid-July. The intense heat and humidity of the summer has arrived, drawing more and more people to cool themselves by its shoreline. But underwater, the increased sunlight and temperature is triggering changes as well. Summer is a good time to fish. Not only is the weather warmer, so we can enjoy fishing more, but there are more fish. Blackfish, summer flounder, and bluefish 
are a few of the more popular eating fish which are caught by recreational fishers out for a day on the Sound. Blackfish are year-round residents in the Sound, like the winter flounder. Blackfish prefer rocky habitats such as man-made jetties. Summer flounder, also known as fluke, is a summer visitor. They leave deep offshore waters to take advantage of the warm, food-rich sound waters. Bluefish, a warm water species, migrate from the waters off the Carolinas. They are voracious feeders on small fish like silversides, anchovies, and their own young, commonly known as snappers. Commercial fishers get busy during the summer months as well. Here a commercial lobsterman out on Long Island Sound empties his lobster pots of their catch. In the summer months, the lobster catch is usually greater than at other times of the year. This is because lobsters migrate inshore during these summer months. Lobsters have been known to travel over long distances. Some lobsters tagged in the sound have been found as far north as Massachusetts and up several hundred miles offshore. Lobsters are omnivorous feeders which eat both plant and animal matter and occasionally other lobsters. Lobsters are a flavorful delicacy which is rich in protein. They are also an important resource to the local economy, employing thousands of people to catch, process, cook and serve this local favorite. During the summer, there is also increased activity for other benthic or bottom-dwelling organisms, such as clams, oysters and mussels. These bottom dwellers are known as bivalves, animals which have a pair of shells held together with a hinge. These bivalves spawn when the weather becomes warm. The water column is then clouded with millions of eggs and sperm spewn into the water. During the summer, as in other times of the year, one can see baymen harvesting hard shell clams in harbors and bays around the Sound. The clams share the bottom with other benthic organisms such as worms and snails. Worms continually plow through the organic rich mud as they search for food. This simple activity is very important in aerating the muds, much like earthworms aerate your garden soil. By summer, the early spring bloom of phytoplankton is long over. Diatoms have now been replaced as the dominant microscopic plant form by dinoflagellates, which have a flagellum, or whip-like tail, to propel them through the water. Under certain conditions, these dinoflagellates have been known to multiply so greatly as to color the water red or brown with their immense numbers. This is the mouth of the Connecticut River, which along with other rivers in Connecticut and Long Island, pumps billions of gallons of fresh water every day into Long Island Sound. This fresh water is lighter less dense than salt water and tends to float on the top of the water column. When this fresher water on top is heated by the effects of the summer sun, this layer becomes more buoyant still. This creates a distinction or stratification between the warmer, fresher water on top and the colder, saltier water on the bottom. With wind and water calmer, there is no physical force strong enough to mix these two layers, as happens at other times of the year. 
As the blooms of phytoplankton die, they sink downward through the water column. During the summer months, near the bottom, this dead plant matter is decomposed by bacteria, just like dead plants decaying on land. The active bacteria use up the oxygen in the lower layer of water. Surface waters which receive oxygen from the atmosphere and from the photosynthesis process cannot penetrate into the bottom waters because of the stratification of the water column. This phenomenon, which normally occurs in late July and August, is known as hypoxia, or a shortage of oxygen in the water. Those that can migrate out of the area, such as fin fish, usually do. Life that cannot move fast enough may die. Hypoxia can be a big problem in western Long Island Sound and in some shallow bay areas during hot, windless summer days. In the summer months, as any bather of Long Island Sound waters can tell you, jellyfish arrive. Jellyfish drift in with the warmer weather and graze on the zooplankton. Jellyfish, such as the Aurelia or moon jellies, have stinging cells on their tentacles. Contact with the tentacles can cause painful rashes that persist for several hours. There are also many tenophores which arrive in late summer, known as comb jellies, they can reach four inches long and are ferocious consumers of zooplankton. It is autumn now, September, October, and November. The temperature is dropping. The winds are picking up again. Storms, sometimes even hurricanes, visit Long Island Sound. As the water temperature at the surface comes closer to that of the bottom layer, and as the wind stirs up the water, the distinction between the two layers of water disappears. Oxygen is more evenly distributed throughout the water column. The churning waters stir up nutrients that have accumulated on the bottom. The increased dispersion of these nutrients causes a less intense bloom of phytoplankton in the fall. Zooplankton increase in numbers as well because of the increased food supply. Migratory fish such as striped bass are still eating the silver sides, killifish and anchovies that were hatched in the spring and grew through the summer. This may be their last feeding before they migrate out of the sound and head south to warmer waters. Shorebirds capitalize on the autumn feast as well. Resident animals must fatten up before the arrival of the long, cold winter. By December, it is winter on Long Island Sound. Many animals have left the area. Most resident animals become less active. Some migrating birds from the north overwinter in the relatively mild climate in the Long Island Sound region. Ducks, such as hooded mergansers, golden eyes, eiders, old squaw, canvasbacks, loons, grebes, and scalp can be seen throughout the Long Island Sound during the colder months. Temperatures decrease and the metabolism of many species slows down. Food levels are low, but the sound is not dead during the winter. For example, a small fish known as the sand lance or sand eel becomes active in winter. In the warmer months, sand lance have a curious habit of burying themselves in the sand, thus the name. In December, Sand lands emerge and form large spawning schools which can be seen over shallow areas. By late February, winter is coming to an end in the sound. The temperature begins to warm up again. The spring bloom of phytoplankton will begin soon and the beginning of another cycle of seasons of Long Island Sound.
It is a relatively harsh climate here in Long Island Sound. Marine life must adapt to the changes brought on by all four seasons. The water is a mix of salt and fresh water. There is a lot of competition for the food here and a high concentration of human beings are using the same resources to live by, to eat from, to play in and to dispose waste. Relatively few species have what it takes to survive in the face of these conditions, but those that do tend to thrive in great numbers. From the Spartina grass, which braves the briny waters in the shallows, to the blackfish, which lives all year round in the rocky crags on the bottom, to the voracious copepods reigning in the microscopic world, all these and more are a part of the changing panorama of the seasons of Long Island Sound.